Hi, Chuck Dieter here at the Headwater Science Center, and it's 3.30, or a little bit thereafter, and we're going to do another one of our live shows here. And today's show, I got, the, somebody was playing with these the other day, in fact our director, Lee, was playing with these the other day, and trying to uh, uh, think about this a little bit, and it's all about physics, and it got me thinking about collisions, about things banging together, knocking together, and I just kind of enjoy knocking things together sometimes. Now I've done a couple of these uh, uh, shows on our 3.30 programs, uh, oriented toward this kind of thing in the past, and I've always had a little problem setting up experiments, setting up uh, demonstrations of things, because it's very hard. You can think of something and know the principles in the ideal setting, in a laboratory type setting, or in a setting that's all set up for you, but actually making them work in the real world is an entirely different thing. Now, oftentimes you hear about some kind of scientific development or some kind of uh, new thing, new topic in science or something exciting happening, and they talk about what's been done in a laboratory. And then they say, well, will that work in the real world? Well, that's what we deal with, this kind of thing. We can set things up perfectly so you can demonstrate a principle in the laboratory, but it's very hard to get that to work in the real world. Like this right here. This is called a Newton's cradle. And it demonstrates, you know, kind of some of Newton's principles. Isaac Newton is, you know, a very famous scientist that uh, develops some laws that have to do with uh, motion and interaction uh, of uh, objects in motion. What this does is it shows one thing. It shows what is pretty much a series of elastic collisions. And an elastic collision is one in which the kinetic energy and momentum are, as they say, conserved. In other words, nothing's lost. Now, in the real world, and things, when two things collide together, you're going to lose some energy somewhere. Like this, I'm going to pull this out. And this one's moving out this far, and it's going to hit this one. The center of mass is going to line up right with the center of mass of that one, and all these have got the centers of mass lined up. And that's going to transfer energy through to the, to the last one in line, and let's see what happens. It kicks the last one out in line. doesn't move all of them. It kicks the last one out in line about the same distance that this one moved. They're all about the same mass, all about the same dimensions. So you can see it's not absolutely perfect. It's actually moving the ones in the middle a little bit. And so that's not really totally an elastic uh, collision. And you can hear some noises. You can hear a little, I'm gonna hold these steady. Though. And you can hear it's making a little sound. So some of the energy of that collision, that impact, is being transmitted out into the air as sound. And sometimes we got this one. These are manufactured and they're all set up in a factory. So they're all carefully measured. And you saw how this one was, well, not entirely perfect because the ones in the middle did move a little bit. Let's see if there's any difference between that one and this one. Oh, you know what? I think this one is a little bit better lined up, a little bit better manufactured because these aren't moving as much. The ones in the middle aren't moving as much. And trying to track down all the little differences that make that work or not work, and eh, that's very difficult. But sometimes if you do it on a larger scale, you can get away with, uh, with some things that uh, are not, uh, well, they're not perfect, but they're, they're pretty good. Anyway, let's mess with this. Let's have fun with it. Okay, we'll pull the camera back there, Spencer. I've got a couple of volunteers here. And the goal is to get the camera far enough back that you can see what's happening. I don't know, can you catch both these ramps on the same, in the same shot? Take a look there. Can you get them? You can get the middle. You get the middle. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to move these forward. And let would you, volunteer, what's your name, volunteer? Uh, Matthew. Matthew, 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 perfect here because here maybe the, the little track there because we're lining this up pretty much by eyeball and like carpet squares these carpet squares are pretty regular they've got the same dimensions and so I can say well I'm gonna line the ramp up along the division between these carpet squares and those carpet squares and make it a straight line so I've got some tape there to see it's pretty much a straight line and I've got a little rubber 
track here and get the start our exhibits. And should I move this one in? Yeah. Okay. Move this in. How about if I put it right here? Will that be good? Okay, very good. Already, we're trying to get this on video. Trying to get it lined up like this along this straight line. That looks great to you? Yes. I'm going to take a little to the side. Okay, there we go. All right, good. How's this look to you? Very good? Okay. Now, we're going to try to line these up as best we can. And all we're going to do is roll a couple of bubbles down here and see if we can get them to collide straight on. And see just how elastic that thing is going to be. Now, wait a minute, before we do the bowling ball, we're going to start with something little. You hold that one. You come over here. You can this one over here. Now, you're going to hold it right here at the end of the one by two, like this. It has to sit there. And here we encounter the human factor, because we could have, have some human error here. So what we want to do is let go of both of these at the exact same time and see if we can get them to collide right here in the middle. And we're going to do it by, don't do it this time, but we're going to go one, two, three. Not after three, not before three. One, two, three. Okay? One, two, three. That was pretty close. Not perfectly lined up, but we got that was pretty good. Okay, let's try one more time. There's a bucket over there. Now, on the table. I picked a good assistant from one of our guests because Matthew's lining this up for us. Okay, you guys ready? Are you related? Yes. You know each other? Brother and sister. sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> we could start two conflict here, but we won't because these guys I know are, are compatible. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Whoa! A little better. Now, you know what? We didn't have an exact collision where they go bang with the centers of the mass, knocking against each other, and then recoiling on a straight line. But, if you notice that, let's go one more time, they hit the middle and they went off in the same, at the same angle. That was the angle, same angle to the, this straight line, and the same angle to that straight line, but opposite. Okay? One more time. So, we are demonstrating, but we got some regularity if we try to keep everything constant. Now, these wooden balls are exactly alike, but too close for practical purposes. So, one, two, three. Well, wait a minute. Oh, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> the human element. Okay, that's right. Oh, you got one. Good. Here we go. You ready? One, two, three. Whoa! When they hit, they go up at the same angle to this center line. Now, I'm not sure exactly how you would analyze that, but that shows that we do have something set up that's pretty well, yeah, pretty well lined up, and it's uh, pretty regular. Now, let's try it with a couple other things. There's a black bowling ball right behind it. Let's get rid of these. Take these off. And... Yeah, that's a 14 pound bowling ball. I don't know if you'll find it's flat right here. You might find it in the area. So I'm going to put it right at the top of the ramp. And we'll try to make a nice collision. Right in the center. Let's see if we can really get some. Now, I guarantee you there's going to be some energy dissipated by sound. And you know what? I'm looking at that track. And it's lined up a little bit too far this way. So we just keep the ramp back a little bit this way and try to make it nice and straight. Oh, there you go, wrong rip. See up to the end of the ramp here? We want the tape to come right in the middle of the end of the ramp. Whoop, now it's too far the other way. I'm getting picky here. Okay, oh, that's looking pretty good, pretty good. Okay. Look good over there? Alright, ball at the top of the ramp. Now we're going to try to make these things collide right in the middle, right in the space, exactly equal distance from the end of each ring. One, two, three. Now 
not too bad. Let's try it one more time. Rewind that one. Now that looked like close to. Oh, you want to try that one? Okay, well, that looked like close to an elastic collision. If it was perfectly elastic collision, where the centers of mass are exactly lined up, they would go bang and hit, and then they would rebound from each other at exactly the same velocity that they had when they hit. It would go bang like that. We didn't quite get that, not quite perfectly lined up, but it looks like a pretty equal velocity going back. Now we've got a 9 pound ball, it's going to be encountering a 14 pound ball. We've got the same acceleration, the same distance of acceleration, and the same height. So it's going to, gravity is going to pull it down about the same amount. So they're going to come up at each other with about the same velocity. Let's see what happens. Okay? Now, I find that if your hands, if your fingers are in the holes, that's going to mess up the release. So just kind of hold it with, yeah, hold it with one hand or both hands. One, two, three. Whoa! Difference, huh? Yeah. Much more mass here. That one pretty much stopped, but it transmitted a lot of impact that way. Let's try it one more time so you can see that flash. Here you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, here we go. That's pretty dramatic. You watch that one and see how it moves after the collision, and watch, yeah, keep your eye on both of them, which is going to make your eyes a little Okay, just, uh, just watch this up. One, two, three. Whoa! Man, it makes a difference. Much more momentum coming this way, much more kinetic energy coming that way. Now, I've tried to do something with bowling balls um, in the past that it never worked because there have been too many factors that produce some kind of error. I want to, now there's a principle involved with things that collide. When something hits a surface at an angle, if it's a perfectly elastic collision, it's going to hit at an angle and reflect at the same angle. The angle of incidence, that's this angle, which comes from that side, equals the angle of reflection, that side. So say we've got this marked up, so it's coming this way at about a 45 degree angle to this wall. And from there, about a 45 degree angle. So what we want to do is see if we can make it roll this way on that track and go that way at 45 degrees. Now it's not perfect. I realized something when I was marking this out. The carpet blocks on this side are a little bit narrower than the ones and the main part of the floor because they had to cut them a little bit to fit into the space within the wall. So that's probably going to throw us off a little bit. But we'll see how much it does. Now, I wanted to start up from that side first, maybe we'll try it from that side, but the idea is if we roll one down here, I hope it's going to go straight down the tape and then reflect straight up that tape. Never been able to do it before because there's been a too much give in the wall, there's been an uneven floor, and I know this floor is perfectly even, but let's see what we come up with. Okay, so now we're going to move this back this way. See if we can get that in the middle. Let's set this up right here. Right like that. And just tell you what, move that one out of the way. No, you don't have to line it up there yet. I'm going to put this ball right here. And the idea is, roll one down there and see if you can hit that one. Don't know if we're going to be able to do it. Hey, you picked that up like a pro. Very good. Okay, now, make sure it's up to you. Okay. Well, now, wait a minute here. No. Are you going to turn that and keep track of the fancy camera work here? I'm in. I'm good. Yeah. All right, good, good, good. Okay, now, here we go, on three. But it doesn't matter because you know, whenever you want to, but one, two, three. Yes. Nope. Oh, not at all. That didn't work at all. <laughs> okay, now. Okay, now you got the camera set up there. You're going to have to move it. Yeah. Okay, so try it one more time, and I'm going to hold this to see if we can get it 
So we don't have that problem. And it could be, is the ball too heavy? Has it got too much momentum? That's hitting this too hard and transferring too much of its energy to the wall? I don't know. Let's try it. Are you going to try it? I'll try that one. Let's try the orange one. Let's see it. Very good. That's what I like. Experimentation. Okay, here we go. Give it a try. Go for it. Not even close. Not even close. I'm so disappointed. It hits the wall and it must transfer much of its, most of its energy through here and it loses it. Otherwise, it would bounce out that way. Hmm. Tell you what, let's try one more thing. Let's move the ramp in closer. Well, I'll tell you what, let's see what happens when we try it this way. Maybe there's some difference in the floor or something, so let's set the ramp up there and run it from the other side. I think it's not so much the floor or anything else. I think it's, I think it's the wall. It's too much given the wall. Okay? There's a space in between the floor and the wall. Really yeah, the bottom think, bit is in, yeah I think that's what's doing it. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah. Let's give it a try. Don't hit my feet. Okay. Here we go. No problems. No. no. One of these days, I'm going to get an elastic collision. I'm going to get the angle of incident to equal the angle of reflection. But you know what? Those are heavy and they're really transferring a lot of their energy to the wall. What if we tried something lighter? Okay? Sure. Just... Yep. Let's try setting that up the way we tried it at the beginning. And we want to line up. We're going to try this with a wooden ball, one of those ones we did at the beginning. We're going to line it up so we don't have. Too much difference in there. All right, here we go. One, two, three. You ready? You ready? Oh, okay, get the right. rest. No good whatsoever. It just takes off at that angle. Huh? Well, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing wrong. I don't know. I think it's just this surface is not a good reflecting surface. I'm going to experiment with this and try it another again, another time on a 3.30 show and see if we can get that to work. Because if you try that on a pool table, it works. You're taking a pool shot from over there and you want to hit a ball that's over there and you got something else in the middle, you can aim it here and the angle of incidence will equal, equal the angle of reflection and hit that ball. But it doesn't work here. You know? So, we didn't get the result we wanted, or I didn't get the result I wanted, but learn something. And that's the most important thing. Do you guys want to try any other kind of experiments? We did all three of one, one bowling ball at the point of impact, two balls going down. Let's do that. Let's get that iron. Yeah, put the lighter one in the middle. Uh, make sure you put the yellow orange one over here. And then set those two big ones up on the ramps and smash this thing. <coughs> Now obviously we're losing a lot of energy in sound, but I was thinking maybe we wouldn't lose, yeah, let's get those lines up about the same distance. I was thinking we wouldn't lose so much in sound or something like that that we would have a problem. They were not lined up exactly as we were. Yeah, try, try getting the right shoulder. Okay, one last shot and see what kind of results we get. Now we're going to try to make them hit at the same time, so we want to release them at the same time. All set. Yeah. One, two, three. Let's hope that damn thing won't. Well, it broke the wood. Ah, okay. That's our problem. We got too much give. I thought this piece of plywood, which finished on one side, would really work. Well, I want to thank our volunteers, Matthew and Macy. Come on forward, please. Take a bow. Take a bow. Take a bow. Yay! They just came in to do.
today to look at the Science Center and we redress and been doing this. So thank you very much guys. And alright. Next time we'll experiment some more. <laughs>